court so that claimant but they also enforce other High Court writs. Today, they're in Hackney, East London, where a property belonging to the Hackney Joint Estate Charity has been occupied by squatters. The charity rents out buildings to finance its work with disadvantaged people in the borough, but with the squatters in place, there's no income. That's your hat, Uncle, here. Yeah? You must have mine. Enforcement officers Lawrence Grix and Kev McNally are part of a team who must get the squatters out. They're being a bit quieter than usual. Just coming up to six in the morning, we're in Hackney. Um, we're at the rendezvous point, we're just waiting for some of the others to arrive. We'll be moving in covertly. We go in nice and early, hopefully we'll catch them in bed. But they won't have time to respond, we'll catch them unawares. We'll just get copies of the writ, just to hand out any of the squatters want to see why we're there, what the, what the legal paperwork is, and we've got these to show. Lawrence and Kev have done this sort of thing before. They're not normally aggressive. You do you do get aggressive ones, but it, there's all sorts of hazards you've got to be aware of. You've got to be aware of needles, contamination, electricity, water. You want to just try and keep the situation quite calm. Because once one of them starts getting quite blary, it can generally have a bit of a knock-on effect and gains a bit of momentum. But no, we try and keep it all peaceful enough. If they don't want to go and they want to be obstructive, then they'll be forcefully thrown out. For now, the team is sticking to the softly, softly approach. Job one is to enter the building, quietly, if possible. We just don't want to be shouting and hollering, making loads of noise, and alert them to us. I don't want to just barricade themselves in or anything. The easiest way in is always the way they go in. That is always the easiest way. Oh, you can get a crowbar in there. Slip it in there. They can't budge the lock, so they're going to force the door. As expected, the noise attracts attention. Guys, I'm going up the door, please. Good morning. One of the squatters has come down to open the door. How many of you guys in here? Don't waken up your friends and tell them to start packing up, yeah? Okay, thank you very much. I've got one guy in there. He's getting his stuff. He's all right, no problem at the moment. Just one of you in here, yeah? Okay, you need to pack your stuff up. We'll give you some time to pack, yeah? One in here as well. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time to pack. You're about an hour to get your stuff together. How many got in there? Though? Okay, one in there and one in there. One here as well. There's four in all. A bit of effort getting in. Right, mate, can we start getting stuff together? A, a solid still security door. Well, it was on the verge of giving in when the, uh, when the young lady came and opened it. Why? So it does sound like they were expecting us, but we'll give them an hour or so to get their stuff out now. The squatters have hacked into the electricity supply, and it's a serious risk. You know, I don't want to get an electric shock. I don't want to go near this. Like it's been up here and overhanging, it's all cables. It's all been jumped. You see bare electrics everywhere. <laughs> Potentially, you don't know what's live and what isn't, so you just don't touch anything, really. Is there gardening? The homegrown cannabis plants suggest that at least some of the squatters have been here a while. The priority is making sure they're all accounted for, then getting them to pack up their things and move out. Everyone pack it? There's four yeah. people on this floor, yeah. and they're, uh, they're packing yeah. their stuff up. Four blokes yeah, a bit out of it. Got yeah, I've told, yeah, I've told them. I've got a lot of kit. The two geezers a bit out of it, so he's fine, but just keep yeah. a bit of an eye on him as well, you know. Yeah. Everyone, everyone here at the moment is OK. So just try and, try and keep it all on a level. The eviction is going well, but this is only half the job. The writ includes the adjoining property also occupied by squatters. Open the door. They aren't cooperating and won't open the door. The sheriffs take action. We will return to Hackney to see what happens when the sheriffs get in. Then it's the same routine as next door. Good morning, enforcement officers. You speak English? You don't speak English? You do speak English? You understand, yeah? Okay. Pack your belongings and leave. 
Which room's the dog in? Uh, Cobra enforcement officers. Yeah, right, yeah. Oh, we'll give you an hour to get your stuff together, yeah? Okay. Just keep your dog under control. There's the one woman in the room downstairs with yeah. the dog. I thought we'd give her some time. She'll keep the dog yeah. under control. They know the position. They know there's a writ of possession. They know they're going. Um, so they can, you know, just give them a bit of time and they'll go peacefully. We, we find an increasing number that are actually employed. The squatters are cooperating, but there's a lot of kit to shift. Have you got everything you need there? Yes. Yeah. We want it to go for as peacefully as possible. No aggravation. I'm guessing I've only got time for a cup of tea. No. Oh, no. I'll be back at that point. You have to make everyone a cup of tea if you're doing that. How many is there? Fifteen. No, you're all right. <laughs> In this building too, Lawrence spots the telltale signs of horticultural activity. This is um, a little hydroponic cupboard for growing a cannabis plant. There's quite a few cannabis plants being grown around the place. So obviously illegal activities going on. Definitely a bit funky. Uh, they have got a lot of stuff. This guy reckons he's been here a year. So unless he's going to get removal trucks in, he's going to be here all day, which we're not going to. We're not going to be around for. Many of the squatters are now outside the building, and even the dog has been evicted. What's the dog's name? Kilo. The issue now is how to get rid of their stuff. The rear forecourt is getting absolutely full. <laughs> really, they could do with removal lorries. I don't know how they're going to get away from here, but there's an awful lot of stuff going out. Some of the squatters have organised a truck. It's soon full. Others opt for a less legal solution to moving out. Yeah, there's um, been a little bit of a dispute at the moment because the squatters have been going to the local supermarket, paying their pound for their trolley, wheeling them back, filling them with stuff and then taking them away. And the lady from the supermarket has come round demanding her trolleys back. That's what they've been up to, just paying their pound for their trolley and filling it up with stuff. But what do the squatters themselves think? We find ourselves on the road here, you know. And what is next? Things are changing, man. You know, changing too fast. They've given us the time to actually get things out, and, you know, that's awesome. At the end of the day, we've had a good run. We're happy. We know you need the building back. We know you need to renovate. That's OK. That's how the process goes. It's not worth fighting for a building that's actually going to be used. It's worth fighting for a building that's going to be left abandoned. What happens now, standard procedure is we get all that stuff to a safe place and then we go find another building. Luckily, there's plenty around. The sheriffs believe there could have been over 25 squatters in the two properties. We have to search every bit of it. You, you do get people hiding. It's been known before. You come into the most grotty bit and you find somebody hiding in a corner, thinking they're going to get away with it and let their friends back in later on. Now they've all gone and the building can be handed back. Yeah, they've had their time now. Um, all the stuff's gone that they need, so uh, we're going to shut up now. We'll give our client a bit of a tour around, make sure he's happy with everything and um, get everything signed off and we're done here. The manager of the demolition firm contracted to strip the property isn't impressed. It's really bad. There's, um, there's graffiti everywhere, there's rubbish. The basement's full up to the ceiling. Is this dangerous? You couldn't live in it. It's beyond belief, really. It took us a little while to get in because it was a one of them was a very, very secure metal door. But once we were in, they just left. Locksmiths are securing the building to make sure it can't be reoccupied. The owners say it will be redeveloped very soon, with rental income paying for the work of the charity. It's been a textbook operation for the sheriffs, thanks in part to the cooperation of the now former squatters. Enforcement officers, known as sheriffs, have collected almost £200 million of unpaid court judgments in the last three years. We're here to seize goods from the property. Now, we do at this stage have power locksmith if needs be. If you get a county court judgment of over £600, you can pay £60 to take it to the High Court so that the sheriffs can enforce it. We're enforcement officers, we've got a High Court writ. We've come to collect £12,056.76. 
If the sheriff succeed, there's no more to pay. If they don't, there's a £60 admin fee. I'm not leaving, no. I'm an enforcement officer with a high court writ. It's a breakfast time start for the sheriffs. Enforcement officers Lawrence and Kev are heading east out of London. We're on our way to Royston in Hertfordshire at the moment. It's 20 past eight. We're going to a car dealer, Ash Vehicle Sales. It is a limited company. We haven't got limited on our paperwork. We've just got Ash Vehicle Sales. The man the sheriffs are on their way to help is bright young spark Graham Masnick. He currently lives in Ryde on the Isle of Wight. I've been training for electrician for about a year and a half now, about halfway into a three-year course. Graham's ambition is to become a fully qualified electrician, so he's been working and studying hard as an apprentice to learn his trade. As well as qualifications, he also needs a vehicle to get him from job to job. It's essential to get my transport, to get myself into business, really. Saved up about 3,600 and had a part exchange in world car. Graham spent over two months searching online before finding Ash Vehicle Sales, a garage run by Ashley Smith that was selling the ideal vehicle, a Mitsubishi L200. So I looked through his website and it seemed pretty genuine. And it quotes on there that I'm a trustworthy salesman dealer and he's always there to help. Graham made the journey to Cambridge to check out the vehicle. He was thrilled with the Mitsubishi 4x4. When I turned up, he's a friendly guy. He gave me a chit chat as a car dealer would. The vehicle already had the key in it. Took it for a test drive, was happy with it. The guy took the cash, and a couple of moments after that, he left. Graham was happy with the vehicle, and having paid £5,050, made the journey back home. But he wasn't expecting what was to happen next. Went to lock it, couldn't even take the key out. Ignition barrel. Me and my dad was there for about half hour. Pretty frustrated and at the time was very angry. With no way of removing the key from the ignition, Graham couldn't lock the doors to secure the vehicle, rendering it unusable. He desperately needed the car for work, so contacted Ash Vehicle Sales many times to get the 4x4 fixed, but Mr. Smith wasn't interested. It was pretty wrong, really, because he sold me the car and at one point tried to rectify the situation. I mean, like, if I was an electrician, I went to someone's job and I had a problem, I'd say, look, just don't worry about it. I'll be around like, as soon as I can to fix it. It's bang out of order. Mr. Smith didn't acknowledge any of Graham's letters or phone calls, so Graham's only option was to get the vehicle fixed himself at a Mitsubishi garage. The bill after we taken it to Mitsubishi garage was £526. I sent Mr. Smith an invoice for the work to be done. He couldn't have done the work because it had to be done by a Mitsubishi dealer. Ash Vehicle Sales didn't acknowledge the invoice or respond. Graham had to borrow the money for the repairs from his dad. Graham wasn't willing to stand for this and decided to take his case to court. I thought the best way to take it to county court and get the situation done like the legal way. It's Mr. Spiff's responsibility to have a car under like a roadworthy condition. Why should it be my responsibility to fix it when he sold, he sold it to me as it is? Mr. Smith didn't attend court. In his absence, a judgment was issued in Graham's favour and he was awarded £695.67. Since the judgment, Graham still hasn't heard from Ash Vehicle Sales. Now he has one last hope the sheriffs. On their way to Royston, Lawrence is optimistic that he'll be able to get Graham his money. It's a bona fide car dealer. They should have plenty of stock there. One car would probably cover that, so I would hope we would find sufficient assets to clear this quite easily. The ABS? Ash. Sit there. Ash Vehicle Services. Said we've got ash vehicle sales. You have been warned. What have you been warned about? I don't know. Satellite dishes? Satellite dishes? Always watch out for a satellite dish. When they arrive at ash vehicle sales, the gates are locked. 
don't really want him to clock us just yet. He's on us. He's on us. Lawrence was hoping there would be assets, and some promising vehicles are parked outside. But he knows from bitter experience they'll be of no use unless he can prove they are owned by the company. Morning. Looking for Ash Vehicle Sales? Yeah. Is that yourself, is it? To show you some ID. We've got a, a High Court writ to execute against Ash Vehicle Sales on behalf of a Graham Manzik. We're ordered here today to seize goods to the value of £1,640.95. And, and the only way to prevent further action is to pay in full. Graham Manzik? Yeah, M -A, uh, sorry, Maznik, M-A-Z-N-I-K. You know him? Come in the office, I don't know. Step up to where you just turned up, out the front. Oh, because you've got a CCJ against you. I don't, I don't really work, so Ashley Smith, the owner of AVS, asks our camera to stay outside. At first, he doesn't remember the case. I've got a copy. Of, of the actual judgment, and it says that you didn't send a response. Mr. Smith says he's recently moved house and that the paperwork must have been delivered to his old address. But Lawrence isn't buying the story. This is the address we've got, so I would imagine if he came here to deal with you, then that's the address he would have put on it, and that's the address that all the paperwork would have come to. Simplest thing to do, pay it. Lawrence points out that with a live writ, he has to either collect money or assets today. It's gone through the county court stage, it's been transferred up to the high court. So we've got a live writ and that's it. Mr Smith realises that his only option is to pay the money today and he offers Lawrence a cheque. Don't take cheques. No, it's cleared funds, so credit card, debit card, cash, bank transfer. He's going to pay on a card now and get this out of the way, so we're just going to list down some goods. He's, already, he's got this Porsche at the front here, so we'll put that down on our paperwork. Um, he's going to pay anyway, so no, it's all good. I'll write you out one of our receipts here. Yeah. We'll leave you in peace. Ashley Smith has paid the sheriffs in full. Now he wants to put his side of the case. His issue was he bought a vehicle, uh, a week later he had a problem with the lock, um, which he sent me a letter to say to me about it, that he'd already decided to have it fixed without letting me know about it. He referred it to a small claims court and um, it's gone on from there. I've sent paperwork back to the court um, for a resolution centre and haven't heard anything back and then this is why it's resulted like it has today. £1,645.95. I had another option than just pay it but it shouldn't have gone as far as it has today. Um, as I say, it's down to the court's fault, not mine. It's been another good result for the sheriffs and for Mr. Masnick, who will get his money back. But even though they won't need to seize vehicles today, Kev can't help taking a professional view of Mr. Smith's Porsche. No five boxer, four and a half, five grand. Fairly quick, in out, got the payment, onto the next job. Couldn't be better, really, for a car dealer. Sheriffs have special powers to seize goods. They can then sell at auction to settle a debt. Often, the threat of seizure is enough to make the debtor pay. But if the individual or company has no assets to seize, it may leave the sheriffs powerless. That's the challenge facing High Court Enforcement Officers Mark Newton and Tony Smith as they head into Essex, hoping to enforce a claim against a company with a somewhat confusing name. Got to better view windows and determine he's Kent Limited in Wickford in Essex for an amount of £36,126.40. Better View Windows Kent Limited is based in Essex and the claim is being brought by former employee David Still, who was made redundant after 17 years. He rejected the company's redundancy offer and the case went to court where it was not contested. Mr. Still was awarded £30,000 for unfair dismissal and loss of earnings. The company appealed and lost, but the claimant has not received his money. Can Tony and Mark get him paid?
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Off the, um, a few windows and conservatories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the sheriff's. All right. Yeah, from Mr. D.K. Still. All right, I'll see if I get some come out to you. Yeah, we'll wait here then. Yeah? Yeah. Minutes later, Tony and Mark are invited inside. But one of Better View's doors is shut on our camera. General manager's over here. Over there, yeah. Then it's through more doors as they cross to another building to meet the general manager. He doesn't want to be filmed. Our cameraman is asked to leave the building. The man they're meeting is Barry Node. He claims the company has no assets and is unable to pay. What, you've got no way of paying anything at all? All right. He says that any assets on site are owned by his wife. Well, if you can't afford to pay, what we're going to need to do is see proof. That's not yours. We just need to see proof of that, mate. Mark asks for proof about who owns what, and Mr. Node heads off to get the paperwork. Meanwhile, Tony and Mark list assets in case there is anything they can seize. So he drives a Range Rover, which is probably one of these two things here, but at the end of the day, it ain't going to be written to the company, is it? truck and some vans that are quite good, worth a bit of money. We don't know whether they're on finance, we don't know whether they belong to the company, but as it stands at the moment, we have seized them on paper. So we're just waiting for some documents to arrive now. The boss explains that the original company, Better View Windows Essex, went into administration in 2008, when the bank called in their loan. They kept trading through another company, Better View Windows Kent. But all the assets of the Essex company, including the vans the sheriff seized, were bought personally by Mr. Node's wife. So basically all the assets you and your wife personally own because yeah. you lent the money to the company. This is bad news. With no assets to seize, the sheriffs have no way of getting the £30,000. Can Mark get anything for the unfairly dismissed David Still? This is quite a complicated case. Mr. Node says he let five men go and two rejected the redundancy package. One of those has since accepted a payment plan of £500 a month, but David still didn't, leaving him with nothing. So what we're going to need to do is get an arrangement going if there isn't an arrangement in place. Mark tries to speak to the company accountant about putting a plan in place, but he's not there today. With no cash on the table and no assets to seize, reluctantly, Tony and Mark depart, with the promise the accountant will call within a week. Cheers. See you later. Meanwhile, Mr. Node wants to put his point of view and explains that he was ill when the case went to court. I had a, a stroke and I made an agreement to pay £500 a month and it was accepted, but Dave still wants his money in full because I drive around in a reasonably nice car and I work average 16 hour days, and he said that we were very wealthy. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. But where does that leave David Still? Well, basically, we haven't actually got any money. Now, I don't think the claimant's going to be particularly happy with that, but unfortunately, if that's what he's offering, our hands are a bit tied because there is nothing more we can do. If Mr. Still agrees, at £500 a month, the debt will take five years to settle. With nothing to seize, for once, the only powers the sheriffs could exercise are their powers of persuasion. And since we filmed, David still did receive payments of £6,500 from Better View Windows Kent. However, since then, the company has gone into liquidation, with Mr. Still now unlikely to get back the remaining £26,000 he's owed.